Do we know why dreams are so weird? Hmm. Why the logic is just yeah. so, you know, it's just, we, we can't explain why, why we yeah. have that, this kind of imagery, this kind of narrative. Yeah, well, the, well that question kind of ties in with your opening question of uh, an assumption, you know, are dreams utterly meaningless? And, and that assumption doesn't square with actual dream research. And, and same with the idea that dreams are bizarre and weird and, and, and fanciful. If you actually look at uh, a collection of dream reports gathered from ordinary people in ordinary circumstances, they're about pretty mundane things. You tend to dream about the people you know, you're in places you usually are in, you're doing familiar things. In other words, the dreaming mind can simulate our waking reality with, with great ease and does so on a regular basis. So when dreams get weird, when they do get weird and bizarre and strange, it's not a it's not a bug, it's a feature. It's part of what dreaming can do. And it's this, this playful quality that I, that I mentioned before that, that play is, can be bizarre and weird. And, and almost that's kind of the point, is kind of going beyond what is to imagine what might be. So, but, but even in the more run-of-the-mill dreams, it's, you know, the details are, are altered often. You know, it's yeah. like it's not really the house that I live in, and yet I'm right. away. I, I think it's my house, and yeah. it's just like everything, it seems a little off. And I guess I'm wondering mm. why. Yeah, well, and, and, and the offness sometimes is from the waking ego's perspective. And this is where, and we might talk about this later, processes of exploring dreams, of interpreting dreams, often what seems really bizarre and weird with some reflection, with some exploration, you guys, oh, that's 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 a metaphor. That's that's a, that's a symbol. That's an expression, bringing together different, you know, my my experience of this house, my experience of other houses, creating, kind of a, a, a trans house or sort of a you know a, a something that's bringing together many different strands of meaning. So is that is that bizarre or is that is that a different kind of intelligence that's operating and bringing together our experiences in a novel way? Can I offer an example? So here's a dream. Somebody reports uh, a sense that they're at a fancy dinner and there's a kind of this rocking going on. And they realize they're on a cruise ship. And there's this beautiful spread. But they are focused on being engaged in a profound conversation. This is a big dream. Mm -hmm. A profound mm -hmm. conversation about Nietzsche's latter work. And, and just so, so into that. And the discussion is between this dreamer and a giant green squirrel. <laughs> now you laugh, but this squirrel went to Oxford. <laughs> and and so, so the person telling the story, it's like when, when they're in the dream, when we're in the dream, it's not weird. It's only after we right, wake right. up and we look back at the dream with waking world eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we try to bring, we, it's like pulling a fish out of water and saying, my God, this is so weird, right? It's slimy and wiggly. But we need to understand the dream in the dream world. And I think um, rather than just pull the dream into the waking world, we need to be willing to go into the dream world and, and, and look at the dream with what, what I call dream eyes. And uh, <coughs> dreaming gives us an opportunity to practice looking at the world with dream eyes. And then we can actually consciously mm -hmm. use that kind of vision in the waking world and then things get really weird. <laughs> so that dream that you just mentioned, that, that's a real dream? Mm -hmm. uh, as real as dreams are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the word real works with, with yeah. dream work. And I want to jump in and give the sort of neuroscience answer which, as to why they're so bizarre, which is that there, there, are, a lot of, there are a lot more subtle differences in brain activity, but the two really, really major ones are that our prefrontal cortex, which is right behind our forehead, which has a lot to do with logical reasoning. It also has a lot to do with censorship of what's not appropriate. It is damped down. It's, sometimes in the literature it says it's shut down. It, it's still active, but it's way less active than it is on average when we're awake. So that's the area that goes, that doesn't make sense, green squirrels don't exist. That is really quieter than usual. And then our secondary visual cortex, which the primary visual cortex just takes the information from our eyes and tells us we're seeing this or that shape. And the secondary visual cortex is really what puts images together when we're awake and they're coming in from the outside. But it's also the area that activates if we're trying to imagine something, whereas the primary cortex isn't involved in that. And it's more active during rapid eye movement sleep than any other time. So the 
no such thing as green squirrels, areas really shut down, and the generation of vivid visual images that do not have to do with anything that comes in from the outside is really active. So in a brain sense, that's why you can see green squirrels and why you don't question that they exist and went to Oxford. Um,